In this video, we're going to start taking a look at graphing solution sets of linear inequalities. Notice in these inequalities, we have two variables. Before we jump into the two variable cases, let me go back and just remind us of, a, of, of where we're coming from in terms of inequalities. When we're dealing with just one variable, so for example, let's suppose that we have an, an equation like x is equal to 3. If we wanted to graph that point on a number line, we could put a dot at the point 3, and that would represent the solution to this equation. When we went the next, went the distance, and we wanted to bring in an inequality, x, for example, x is greater than 3, notice that 3 really isn't a solution anymore. However, it is an important part of how I describe my solution because it's a boundary point. If I had something like x is greater than 3, I would use an open circle to say 3 is my boundary point. I'm not interested in that point, but I want everything that's bigger than that value. And I could use this in order to describe that. Or if I had something like x is greater than or equal to 3, I would fill that circle in and say, hey, I want to include that boundary point, but then I also want to shade all of these values and include an entire range of possible solutions. So what we're going to be doing in, in this particular video is we're going to take that next step and we're going to go from having one variable to having two. Now, in this case, notice that we have here an inequality. Y is less than 3x minus 1. Well, the boundary value, kind of like this circle that we either fill in or don't fill in, is going to be related to the equation that we would get from this. So if we replace that less than value with the equals to, y equals 3x minus 1, I have, this is what I call my boundary equation. And just like in my graphs up here, if 3 is involved, it shows up on my graph. And so this line, y equals 3x minus 1, needs to show up on my graph when I go to represent all of my solution pieces here. So the first thing that you want to do is you're drawing a problem like this is to figure out how to draw that boundary equation. So in this case, I would identify my slope as 3 over 1, my y-intercept as negative 1, and I can actually plot this boundary equation line on my graph. And this is just going back and using the information that we've used in previous chapters. So we're going to go down to negative 1 and plot a point. Then we're going to use our slope, go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, and again we can add additional points if we want our graph to be slightly more accurate. And normally what we do is we'd connect the dots and we'd have a very lovely line and this is going to be our boundary equation line. Now keep in mind that in this particular case we do not want to include this line. We want y that's less than 3x minus 1 and this line represents the y that's equal to 3x minus 1. So what you want to do as you sketch your boundary equation is decide kind of like the open circle closed circle do I want to include this line or do I not want to include this line? You will want to include the line if you have greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. That's kind of like filling in the dot. From an equation sketching perspective, in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a solid line. So for example, if this was y less than or equal to 3x minus 1, I would draw just a regular old line, nice solid line just like this. If we do not want to include that boundary line, and this is going to happen when we have something like greater than or less than, like I have in problem number 16 here, the way that we denote that in a graph is we're going to use a dotted line. So this is kind of like the open circle concept. We're going to draw a dotted line here. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this because I want y less than 3x minus 1. I'm going to figure out where is my 3x minus 1 line, but because I do not want to include it, I'm going to sketch in a dotted line like that. Now if I'm doing this on paper, a lot of times I'll draw a solid line and then I'll go back and just erase some sections so it looks like a dotted line. But a dotted line on an inequality graph denotes that this is a boundary, but not actually to include those values on it, uh, uh, on my solution set. Now, when we dealt with inequalities before, we had this boundary condition and then we shaded one side of the number line. When we kind of make this jump into two-dimensional space here with an x and y coordinate value, we're going to need to shade a section of our graph and this line here is the boundary that cuts that graph and the shading that's going to be associated with it. So now we need to decide upon the shading of my, which, which section do I shade? Do I shade this upper section here or do I shade this lower section down below? How do you decide? What we're going to do is we're going to use a test point. 
Take your test point in your original inequality. You're going to need to choose an x and a y point that is not on the line. If it's true, you shade that side with the point. And if it's false, you shade the other side. The test point that I usually use whenever it's available is the point zero, zero. And that's because it's really, really easy to plug in. All right, so this always looks a little bit confusing up front, but these are our steps to draw, drawing these graphs. Let's go through this in a couple of problems and you'll see it's not too crazy. So as I look over here at my first problem, I've got my boundary line. Now I need to decide, am I gonna shade over here or am I gonna shade down here? In order to decide, I wanna choose a test point. Now, right now, the point zero, zero does not lie on my line, and I can probably make that a little bit more clear here. When I draw this line here, notice it does not go through the point zero, zero. So I'm going to test zero, zero. I'm gonna put zero in for y and zero in for x. All right, now evaluate this. On the right, three times zero is zero, zero minus one is negative one, and I'm left with this statement zero is less than negative one. Well, that's totally false. Zero is bigger than negative one. So what that means is I do not want to shade the side with zero, zero. I want to shade the other side of my inequality. So I'm going to shade this section of the graph. This is my solution set. I have a boundary requirement and then I'm going to shade everything on this side of the graph because when I tested 0, 0, it didn't work. Now, if you're feeling not very confident and you want to try, try other things, keep in mind you can plug in any point that you want to. So for example, maybe I want to test the point 5, 0 here. If I put 5 in for x and 0 in for y, I get 0 is less than 3 times 5 minus 1. That's 15 minus 1, and it gives me 0 is less than 14. Well, that's true. So that point needs to be included in my solution set. And notice that it is in this area that gets shaded. So this is the idea behind picking a test point. You want to pick a point. Everything is either going to be shaded on this side or on this side. And so you pick a point to decide which one do I shade. If the point is true, we shade the side with the point. If the point is false, then we shade the other side. And that's how you can kind of go through the process. All right, so let's do another one from the beginning here. Here for problem 17, I'm looking at y is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 1. The first thing that I want to do is I want to sketch the boundary equation. And all you do is just replace that greater than or, e greater than or less than symbol, inequality symbol with an equal, equal sign. So I want to think about the equation y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1. It has a y-intercept of 1, so I'm going to plot that point. It has a slope of negative 2 thirds. So from my point, I'm going to go down 2 over 3. That gives me another point. And again, you can plot a couple of additional points if you'd like. Down 2 over 3 again is another point. And then you can connect your dots. Now, notice that my inequality symbol here is greater than or equal to. That means I do want to include my boundary equation. So notice that I've drawn a solid line here to represent that on my graph. Now, an inequality equation is not complete without shading part of the graph. So now we need to decide which section we're going to shade. Um, notice that 0, 0 is not on my line, so I can choose that and use that as a test point. If I test 0, 0, I'm going to put 0 in for y and 0 in for x. And I'm going to see, does this work? Oh, actually put 0 in for x there. Okay, negative 2 thirds times 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, and I'm left with the statement 0 is greater than or equal to 1. Well, that's not true. 1 is bigger. So this means that this is false, so you're going to shade the side without 0, 0, because 0, 0 is not a solution. So if 0, 0 is down here, I'm not going to shade that side. I'm going to shade this side over here. And this graph here would represent my final solution set. All right, 
Let's try a couple of other examples here. For problem number 18, we have 2x minus y is less than or equal to 4. The first thing that I want to do is I want to look at my boundary equation. Now my boundary equation is 2x minus y is equal to 4. Um, notice that this isn't a bad um, orientation for you to be able to sketch the graph. So you should work to get the y by itself so your equation is in slope-intercept form so you can draw the graph. I'm going to start by subtracting 2x from each side and then divide by negative 1 on each side. That's going to get me y equals a positive 2x minus 4 for my equation, um, my boundary line for my graph. All right, so my y-intercept is negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. My slope is 2 over 1, so I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, get a couple of points. When I go back, I need to decide, is my line going to be dotted or solid? I look at my inequality in my original problem. It's less than or equal to, so I do want to include that boundary line, so I'm going to draw a solid line this time. So there's my line. The last piece that I need to decide is, which section am I going to shade? Am I going to shade everything up here above, or am I going to shade everything down here below? Well, in order to decide that, what we want to do is we want to test a point. Notice that my line does not go through 0, 0, so I can use that to test. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 0, 0 back into my original inequality. 2 times 0 minus 0, and I want to see, is that less than or equal to 4? Well, let's try. Zero, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 0 is 0, and I'm left with the inequality 0 is less than or equal to 4. Well, 0 is definitely less than 4, so that means that the point 0, 0 is true. So I want to shade the side of the equation that has 0, 0 in it. So this graph here represents the solution to my inequality. All right, the last example I want to do here is y is greater than 1 third x. Again, we want to start with my boundary equation, y equals 1 third x, just replacing the inequality with an equation. Um, identify your slope and your y-intercept. In this case, my y-intercept is 0 because there's no number added on. And then my slope is 1 third, which means I'm going to go up 1 over 3 to get subsequent points for my graph. So up 1 over 3, up 1 over 3, and connect our dots. Um, now, if I go back and look at my inequality here, notice that it was y is greater than 1 third, not equal to. So when I actually go through, I want to create this as a set of dotted lines instead because I want everything up to this line but not actually including this line. So make sure that we have a dotted line for this one. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I need to make a test of a point. Now, unfortunately, my line goes through 0, 0. So if I put 0 into the original equation, I'm not going to get anything meaningful in terms of shading because all I find out is that 0 is not less than 0, which is why I have a dotted line that goes through that point. So what that means, because 0, 0 is not available, I have to pick another point to test. I'm going to pick the point 5, 0. I can see that it's clearly not on the line. Okay, and I can identify where that spot is. So I'm going to put zero, 5 in for x, and I'm going to put 0 in for y. Let's see what happens. Here, that means I'm going to go back to my original inequality, so y greater than 1 third x, put in 0 for y. Oops. And 5 for x. Now, what that gives me is 0 is bigger than 5 thirds. Well, 5 thirds is a positive number, so that's definitely bigger than 0. So this is a false statement. So what that means is the point 5, 0 failed the test, so I want to shade the other side of the equation that does not involve 5, 0. And that's why I picked this side up here to shade instead. All right, so that's the process that you want to go through anytime that you're looking to graph an inequality. Um, graph the boundary line, either dotted or solid, depending on the type of inequality and then go back and test a point that's not on the line and use that test point to determine if you shade the side with the point or you shade the side on the or you shade the other side of the of the uh, line when you go to do your graph